Welcome back everyone to Boring Build Friday. Today we're going to get the quarter panel on our Yukon and get it ready for paint. If you don't know what Yukon I'm talking about, the link's up above. So let's get started. So we're going to finish welding up the quarter panel from last week. Little spots here and there. We don't want to get one area too hot, so we'll move around. Now we can prep our quarter panel, get it ready to go in, grind off both sides of our spot welds, got my weight belt holding my back together, it's been a long day. Don't get old kids. I'll put our weld through primer on there, and we'll put the weld through primer on the truck itself with our patented masking system. So I'm wearing my new welding blanket fuzz toupee. You probably didn't notice it, it looks so natural. The welding blankets are great, but they do leave lots of fuzz everywhere. Now we're going to weld in our backings on the two pillars. We didn't need those in there to fit it up but we will need them in there when we're putting it on for the last time. So instead of using all that foam that causes these wheel wells to rot out, I use some panel bond. It doesn't absorb the dirt and moisture like the foam does. It'll still hold that quarter panel on. Hopefully it just won't rot it out. We're still going to add our corrosion protection when we're done. But we're going to see how this works over the foam. Weld up our quarter panel. Remove all our clamps. Now we're ready for them to grind it down and prime it and paint it. So we're going to get our gate apart so that they can edge the inside of the gate when they edge the inside of the truck. This wiring harness is going to be totally different than our truck. This one has a backup camera and a power lift gate, and ours doesn't. So we had to take it out of the way anyway to paint it. So we'll just replace it with the correct one. Fish the wires out of there, as far as we can anyway. Still got to disconnect some more stuff. So it looks like we're going fishing in the tailgate. Of course it's a 10 millimeter. So GM seems to feel that every bolt is gonna come loose on this truck, so they like to dunk everything in Loctite, which makes all these bolts on this tailgate impossible to take out without breaking the plastic they're mounted to. I'm working on coming up with a solution for that, and I think I might have figured it out. We'll try it on the door handles. Lucky for me, I have another tailgate to take apart, so if it works, I don't have to worry about breaking those. I'll we'll change the brackets for our lift struts. GM didn't paint under them, but I'm going to. Take out this extra one for the power lift gate so I don't end up with the lift strut in the wrong place again. I'll remove the wiper motor. More Loctite, yay.
Now we can attempt to unbolt the wiper motor, but the Loctite was stronger than the rubber mounts for the bolts. But now we can at least get the wires out. So on these, you're supposed to be able to just turn the bolt, but again, GM with your Loctite fetish, ended up snapping the top of the bolt off, so I had to do it the hard way. Just use a ratchet underneath to loosen them up. Now we can run them down like we're supposed to. And it just slides out. Now you take the sensors off the side for the power lift gate. Now we'll take our other lift gate apart while our painter paints it. Get all these parts ready to go back in so we can put our lift gate on our truck. Pull the upper trim panel down first. Wiggle and pull. Pull the lower trim panel down. Two more clips inside. You have to open the hatch to get to them. Push the centers in. Pull them out. Don't push the centers all the way in. Or you gotta go find them inside the tailgate. Lift it up over the latch. Open the tailgate, and there's our panel. Put our custom prop rod in there. That's a snap on prop rod there. Now we can unbolt our latch. This one's different. So we're going to need to use this one. The power lift gate is a power latch. Take our brackets off. Since our other ones are not painted, we took them off. We'll just put these on, that way they're painted. Bolt them on there. I'm just going to do enough to put the gate on the truck. We'll put the rest of it together later. Put our latch in. Put our fancy drain hole caps in there. This truck is too classy to just have drain holes. I'll put the lift gate on by ourselves. The afternoon crew is probably a CrossFit flipping tires. So you just latch the bottom of it. Screw the bolts into the top. Tighten them down a little bit. Now I felt like changing over some more parts. So we're going to pull all the caps off to 
cover up the holes in the side where the sensor should be that our cheapo truck doesn't have. They just pop out. And I felt like changing the wiring harness, so we're going to get that done too. Peel the rubber boot back, get to the plastic underneath, push in the tabs and pop it out. And this wiring harness you can feed through either way. We took the short way this time. Now we can put it in our truck. Now we'll send it through the body, and then clip it in. Clip it into our tailgate. All the way around. Now we can put all the little plugs in, snap in. Now we can pull our door panel off. Body guy's there to fix some of the little dents and dings. So we gotta get it apart. We're gonna need it apart anyway for when they go to edge out the doors. But we're just gonna take off enough for him to do his body work. So I'll pull the little covers off, get to the bolts behind them. And we can pull the door panel off. Disconnect the inside handle and the window button. Now you can pull the water barrier off. This is a slow process, it takes a lot of patience, unless you want to tear it in half. Tearing it in half is a lot more fun, but a lot harder to reuse it when you're done. So, I we'll have to use a little patience. Tense moments as I waited for it to rip. Can he make it? Oh, almost. Come on. You can do it. Almost there. Success. Now I can rip the other one in half. Pull the speaker out. There's a little clip on the back. It's like a mouse trap. It snaps your finger. The chances of you getting your finger snapped by that little clip on the back are pretty slim, but I managed to do it every single time. Tells you the kind of luck I have. Now I'll put the window regulator down. Slide the window out. This one comes out the inside. Can I bolt the regulator? Pull the regulator out.
unplug it. Pull the plugs off. Disconnect the wiring. Now that we put the window down, we don't need it anymore. Fish it out of there. Pop all the clips off. Disconnect it from the latch. And wiring's done. Now I gotta take the door handle off. I have found the secret to removing these door handles without breaking the nut certs. It's heat. So, my theory was if we heat it up a little bit, we can melt that Loctite so it'll come off. So far, we got one out. And two. Hundred percent success rate on this door handle. I pull the belt molding off, lift up, slide it down. Pull the window track out. Pulls away. Push it down inside the door a little bit. Take it out and around. The vent visors don't make it any easier. Now it's out of the way so he can do his body work. Now we'll pull the moldings off the door. Got our putty knife. Just slide it in there and cut all of our two-sided tape. You don't want to pry up too much on this. You will dent the door. And no, it's not just because GM is weak. It'll do it on any car. So you just keep a little tension on there and slide the putty knife in there. Do the same thing on the front door. Until we get to the molding. I want to take the nameplate off. I learned that little scream from the afternoon crew. So now we can finish up our molding. And it's off. Take the molding off the bottom of the door. Now we're onto the front door. Pull our little covers off so we can get access our bolts behind them. Lock off. Disconnect our handle. This one I chose to pop the door module out. There's also the window buttons. Just because there's a lot of plugs on the back. It's real easy to get to when they're out. Now you can pull this door handle off the same way, heated them up, broke them loose. 100% success rate on these as well. I think I'll be heating all of them from now on. So now we're going to seam seal everything. After our body guy got all of his body work done. Smooth it out with our finger. Alright guys, leave me all the comments. I should be wearing gloves. And we'll use a little wax and grease remover to soften it up and smooth it out with an acid brush. Just apply light pressure. Put a little seam seal on this corner here. I usually have a bunch of foam squishing out of here. This time we're not going to use any wax and grease remover to smooth it out. This will be good enough. Now 
Now we're back to the front door. I have to pull these doors apart so the painter can paint it now. So we'll take our window out. Now the water barrier. This one won't take as long as the back door due to the magic of video editing. Unbolt our mirror. Pop it off of there. I think the clip was stronger than the bolts. Fish all of our wires out of there. We're gonna have to use our other mirror anyway. This one has a lot more options. I'm gonna pull our glass out. Try not to tear the tint. Or break the glass. Either one would be bad. Let me pull our window channel out. This one goes further inside the door. You gotta kinda turn it sideways to lift it out in the front. And bolt the regulator. And our speaker. Of course that little clip in there snapped my finger again. I'm a slow learner. Now we can pull our window regulator out of there. Disconnect all our wires. Fish them out of there. Now we can take the doors off so they can edge them out. The only thing left in them is the latch. So you just unbolt the two bolts from the bottom, unbolt from the top, and it lifts up. Do the same thing on the front door. Now we can pull our latch out. This is the front door. And pull our latch out of the rear door. Okay, so it's 3 a.m. and apparently the painting gnomes were here last night. So we're gonna throw our truck back together. We gotta get it out of the shop so they can start work in the morning. Now we put our latches back in now that they're all painted up. It is a Wednesday. They normally don't work on my cars during the week, but the painter felt motivated. So here I am early in the morning get it out of the way before they come to work. Put our plugs back in the bottom of the door. And our rubber baby buggy bumpers. Put 
Put our latch in the rear door. More rubber baby buggy bumpers. Cap on the bottom. Now we put the doors back on the truck. Guide them into place. Drop them down on the pin. Pray that they stay there. Until we run a bolt in. And then we can breathe again. We can put our bolts in the bottom. There is some adjustment on these because the bottom does move in and out. The top is adjustable, but when you take it off the pin, it doesn't have to be realigned. So basically, you just have to line up the bottom in and out. We got our bolt in the top. Now we're just going to put our bolts in the bottom. everything down. Close the door and make sure it lines up. Now we're going to get the truck ready for paint. Pull this wheel liner out. We're going to paint the fender so the wheel liner has to be out of the way so you can mask it off. And we're going to pull the headlight and the front bumper off. So it helps to have the wheel liner out for that too. Pull the bumper out of the driver's side. Probably going to end up fixing the bumper. It's got a couple little dents on there from the forklift. Unbolt the top of the bumper. Pull it out of the clips on the side. A couple bolts in the bottom. And we can pull it out of there. Disconnect the fog lights. Disconnect the other fog light. Pull the bumper off. Now we can pull the headlight out. Three bolts and two plugs. Pull the driver's side tail light out and the D pillar trim. Just to make it easier to mask off. It's only three screws and one plug. Sorry, four screws and one plug. So that's it. Basically, my part of this truck is done, other than putting it all back together. But I have to wait for the painting gnomes to come in and finish it up. So hopefully, I'll have a finished video of this truck next week for you. If not, maybe the week after. So like the video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see the rest of this build or whatever I have next week. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Subscribe to see the rest of this build. As always, thanks for watching. And f off trains. So like the video if you found it interesting. So like the video if you found it interesting. So like the video if you found it interesting. I gotta stop saying this. So like the video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see more of this build. As always.